Hi, this is Pastor Kent, and this is Abba's house. Um, it's all about today. being God's way. So, let's have a word of prayer. Abba, thank you for this day. Thank you for being here with us. Bless God, strengthen and keep us in thy way and in thy will. And we say these things in Yeshua, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Being in God's way, what does exactly divinely or definitively, biblically, what does that say? God like or God like? Okay. It's an objective. We have to strive to be like Him, resembling God or a God in qualifications such as power, beauty, or benevolence, divine godly and superhuman um, befitting or approaching to a God. Um, the act as though we were God-like powers to decide our own destiny. We are in charge of nothing. We have no say. We have the ability to ask, but we don't have the ability to command. Because until we get to heaven, we will not be God-like or God's so, what is God like? The very culture the very culture in the history of the world has some certain of what God is like. Some have assumed that God is a control of the weather and have made images of a storm god throwing lightning bolts around Baal worship in Canaan. Some have assumed that God is very powerful, so they worshipped the most powerful thing that they could use, the sun, Ra, worshipped in Egypt. Others have assumed that God is everywhere. Therefore, we have worshipped everything. Pathomistic is static philosophy. Some have assumed that God is unknowledgeable and have turned to agnosticism or just to cover their basis have worshipped the unknown God. My God, our God, conquers all. We're going to Acts 17, verses 24. To 28. The God who has made the world and all things which are in it he being Lord of heaven 
and earth does not dwell in temples made with hands nor is served by man's hands as indeed something himself given to all life and breathe all things and has made one of the blood of every nation of men to dwell upon the whole face of the earth having determined ordination times and the boundaries of their dwelling that they may seek God if indeed they might feel after him and find him although he is not far from each of us for him we live and move and exist as also some of the poets amongst you have said for we are also his offspring you know if we take a second and uh, go back to Genesis 1 1 in the beginning the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the earth and then we go to John 1 and 1 where it says the word was God the word is God and the word is with God when we look at those two scriptures in context um, we see that the concept of those two passages the old and the new give us that ability um, to see those lost souls in life gone amok. Nothing is done upon this world that God does not know about. You know, if you have the chance, I suggest you read the book of Genesis because it is just chock full of meaty, juicy, wonderful bits of how God gave us that ability. You know, and gives us that probability that there is always going to be that issue um, and show us that God gave us that to find peace of hope 
and ability. You know, if we look at Genesis 2, um, where God made Adam and Eve, you know, and gave us that ability to be his chosen vessels that he pours out his knowledge in. And we take this world and bring it back to where it needs to be. You know? You know, when we look at this and see how God created this world, first he created us in Genesis. Then he gave us a place in the Garden of Eden. Because we were not happy in what we had. We wanted more. The sin of greed took over. And we wanted more. You know. The devil knew what he was doing when he spoke to Eve. You know. On the lust of life. And the pride of life. You know. And uh. He gave her the ability to move on, you know, into a life of sin. And took away that God-given responsibility that we had. God loves us, you know, no matter what we do, you know. He's always there for us. He never lets us down. You know? Let's have a word of prayer. Abba, thank you for being here with us and for these words. Bless these words. May they go forth for spirits and unhardened hearts. And we say these things in Yeshua, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.